Hi everyone, um, I thought I will um, do an audio version of um, my recording for the TOG article titled Very Advanced Maternal Age. Hopefully these audio recordings will help you in that that you could listen to it whilst commuting to work um, or even whilst you were making a, a coffee. Um, it just means that um, you don't have to sit in front of a computer or have the article physically in your hand um, to, to be able to learn the important salient points. Um, so the first page in this article, um, it defines the advanced maternal age. Um, so that's basically, um, it refers to women who are aged 45 years or more um, at the time of delivery. Um, it then talks about the conception rate. So conception using autologous embryos um, is rare and the life birth rate is 2.9% in a cycle for women who are aged 45 years. So the live birth rate is only 2.9%. Um, it shows that, um, so there was a, a study conducted um, uh, in 2016 and it showed that 70 78% of women delivering had conceived um, using ART. So advanced maternal age, uh, women, this, this study particularly looked at women who are 48 years and over and 78% um, of those were conceived, had conceived using um, artificial reproductive techniques. Now we know that artificial reproductive techniques are associated with an increased risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy, pregnancy-induced hypertension, preeclampsia, venous thromboembolism, um, genetic and chromosomal um, abnormalities, structural abnormalities, fetal growth restriction, stillbirth and preterm labour. Um, useful little table here. I like tables personally. It just makes the information quite concise. Um, so there's a table um, which is um, the, the the title for this table is summary of the risks from the current evidence of uh, for women who of very advanced maternal age compared uh, comparing conception with assisted reproductive techniques and a spontaneous conception. So um, so it then the, the table goes on to uh, divide it into different rows and columns. Um, so pregnancy conceived by ART and oocyte donation um, and then it compares this with pregnancy conceived spontaneously. So the maternal preeclampsia rate in a pregnancy that's conceived through ART is 12.6 compared to pregnancy that's conceived spontaneously which is only 1.1. Um, similarly delivery before 36 weeks of gestation um, the pregnancy conceived by ART the rate is 23.3% uh, compared to to the pregnancy conceived spontaneous which is only 9.3. Um, risk of baby being born with low birth weight, less than 2500 grams. Um, again, the percentage of, with, with the pregnancy induced by ART was 22.1% compared with pregnancy conceived spontaneously, which is only 7.4%. Um, Moving on to some of the early pregnancy complications. So, as we said, miscarriage rates are higher with um, ART. Um, so ART is a short for assisted, assisted reproductive uh, technology. Um, so, miscarriage rates increase with increasing maternal age. We we all know that. Um, in in women who ha are of very advanced maternal age, the overall risk of miscarriage um, was fifty three percent. The rates of miscarriage beyond the first trimester were also shown to have increased. Again, the risk of an ectopic pregnancy in women with very advanced maternal age is three times the overall risk of ectopic pregnancy in, in an old woman. Um, so you can see ectopic pregnancy and miscarriage rates are higher, but they've also gone on to talk about the um, the risk of miscarriage after the first trimester, which also seems to be higher. Um, it then goes on to uh, talk about multiple pregnancies. So um, women with a very advanced maternal age are more likely to have a, a multiple pregnancy than younger women. Um, and um, it goes on to um, talk about a in 2018, um, women of you know very advanced maternal age in the UK have a multiple pregnancy rate of 79.3 in a thousand compared with 15.4 in a thousand um, in, in all women. Um, so you can see the, the rate of multiple pregnancy also tends to be higher. Um, the the article um, then moves on to the next page um, where um, there is there is talks about again multiple pregnancy and singleton conceiving. Um, 
it then uh, talks about the, the gestation that these babies might be born on. So um, after assisted reproductive technology, um, there is a 56 to 65 percent more likely to be born um, before 37 weeks um, of gestation. Twin infants are four times more likely to need intubation and 1.5 to three times more likely to be admitted to neonatal intensive care. Um, and then um, the article then moves on to uh, maternal complications, um, risks and recommendations. So obesity. So women aged 48 years or more are more likely to be overweight or obese than younger women. Um, um, you know, as, as it can, you know, it's, it's age related. Um, risk. Um, there is also higher risk of fetal neural um, um, a tube defects um, associated with um, with um, with obesity. Um, pregnant women who are obese are again more increased risk of preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, and cesarean birth than women of normal um, normal weight. Um, so then it goes on to discuss these risks in a bit more depth. So diabetes, um, so maternal age is a known risk factor for the development of um, GDM, which is basically gestational diabetes mellitus. Women who are of very advanced maternal age are nine times more likely to require insulin to treat GDM than younger women. Um, so they should. So these so so pregnancies with uh, in women who are of very advanced maternal age um, should. Have, should be offered um, screening um, at um, uh, 16 to 18 weeks um, in addition to screening at 26 to 28 weeks um, for, 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 for women who are um, obese as well as um, advanced maternal age. Um, so hypertensive disorders, we've already talked about it in briefly that the risk is, is, is a lot higher. Um, it does, the, the article does go on to some, some, so coding some risks, um, but I don't think they, um, they seem to be very, uh, it's, it's nothing that we um, haven't already come across. Um, the next thing it talks about is hypothyroidism, which is again more common in women of advanced maternal age. Um, uh, venous thromboembolism is the next thing it talks about and again the risk of developing VT is higher and hence requiring um, uh, antenatal um, prophylaxis for um, low molecular weight heparin um, and, the, and, and the article specifically mentions that um, women over the age of 35 years have a 70% increase um, in, in VTE in the postpartum period um, and admission alone increases um, the risk of VTE by 12-fold, um, quite significant. Um, it then uh, talks about previous uterine surgery. So women aged 48 years or older have a 26% risk of having had previous uterine surgery, um, you know, um, compared with only 7% of uh, younger women, and we know that having previous surgery on the uterus could could um, lead to complications in in the pregnancy. Um, placental complications. So, um, women of very advanced maternal age are more likely to three times more likely to have a placenta previa. Um, so this is quite significant. Um, so in so then it talks about in a primary Paris women, um, uh, this may be as a result of the assisted reproductive technology, the multiple pregnancy, or the damage to the endometrium during previous uterine surgery. Um, women with advanced maternal age are three times more likely to have a placental abruption than um, younger women. Postpartum hemorrhage has been shown to be um, the most statistically significant complication affecting women of uh, very advanced maternal age. Um, PPH affects, so PPH is a short for postpartum hemorrhage, affects one in four women of uh, very advanced maternal age. Um, so women of very advanced maternal age are four times more likely to need blood products following a PPH than younger women. Um, cesarean section, so rates are again higher in women of very advanced maternal age. Um, so primary Paris women of very advanced maternal age are eight times more 
more likely to deliver by cesarean section than a woman aged um, 30 to 34. Um, admission to hospital and in intensive care. So women of advanced maternal age um, have a 30% risk of antenatal um, hospital admission and are 33.5 times more likely to be admitted to ICU um, than, than younger women. Um, so you can see the risks are um, quite markedly increased um, and that's what this article is, is referring to. Um, it then goes to talk about effects on the fetus and uh, neonatal morbidity and mortality. So uh, perinatal um, morbidity is the first thing they talk about um, and basically it says that um, one in six babies born to women of very advanced maternal age need admission to uh, to NICU. Um, perinatal mortality um, rates are two to three point eight times higher in babies who are born to women of advanced maternal age. Um, so women of very, very advanced maternal age are advised to take low dose aspirin from twelve weeks of gestation um, and. Um, um, so and also have their um, pregnancy associated plasma protein A, which is PAPE, measured uh, with um, a serial um, assessment of fetal size and umbilical artery Doppler from 26 to 28 weeks with uh, blood pressure measured in the third trimester. Um, trisomy and congenital anomalies. Um, so the incidence of trisomy 21 at a term is one in um, 1,350 for a 25 year old um, woman. Um, this increases to 1 in 35 at the age of 45 years and 1 in 25 at the age of 49 years. Um, so you can see how significantly that risk goes up. Um, so using a cutoff or 1 in 150 at term as a screen positive result, 1 in 4 women of um, very advanced maternal age will um, screen positive. So, so quite a significant um, risk there. So um, the article on also um, gives you a, a, a nice flow chart, um, which I recommend that you look at um, in terms of how to manage um, women of very advanced maternal age. Now, it starts off with um, precon preconception advice regarding, um, so it then talks about individualised risks to mother and fetus, um, folic acid, 400 micrograms or 5 milligrams, depending on the risk factors, medication review, optimising uh, body mass index, uh, benefits of single embryo transfer, women with pre-existing uh, hypertension um, will need an antihypertensive medication review, Review an up to date um, echocardiogram, renal functional te function tests, and renal imaging. Um, it then talks about immediate uh, venous thromboembolism risk assessment once pregnant, so um, clear pathway with, for women to access prescriptions and support for thromboprophylaxis uh, to ensure uh, compliance. Um, the next box talks about low threshold for referral to early pregnancy unit in light of increased rates of miscarriage and ectopic pregnancy, so uh, venous thromboembolism assessment after miscarriage or ectopic pregnancy. The next box talks about booking appointment to establish uh, methods of conception, um, previous uterine surgery, if so, um, for early referral to a high-risk antenatal clinic to discuss options and risks regarding mode of delivery. Risk assessment for VTE, adv um, advice low dose, um, aspirin, uh, 150 milligrams from 12 weeks of gestation until delivery. Um, then it divides the, the box into singleton pregnancy or multiple pregnancy. So we'll go through the singleton pregnancy first. So high re high um, so early referral to a high risk antenatal clinic. Um, PAP A measured and noted if um, significant if less than 0.4 multiples of the median. Request um, serial growth scans from 28 so 28, 32, and 36 weeks. Um, venous thromboembolism um, risk noted um, and acted on depending on what it is. Um, screening for gestational diabetes uh, with a GTT, which is a glucose tolerance test at 16 to 18 weeks. Screening for um, gestational diabetes with a glucose tolerance test at um, 26 to 28 weeks if screen negative at 16 to 18 weeks 
weeks. Um, regular blood pressure monitoring and urinalysis incre increasing in frequency in third trimester of pregnancy um, with VT risk assessment uh, being looked at again. Um, early discussion regarding um, risk of uh, preterm delivery, mode of delivery and placenta and place of delivery. Women with additional risk factors, example high BMI, multiple pregnancy, hypertensive disease, placenta previa, um, uh, so should have high risk of obstetric antenatal clinic at 30 to 32 uh, weeks and then aim to deliver by 38 weeks to reduce risk of stillbirth. So this was all for the singleton pregnancy. Now for the multiple pregnancy, um, it talks about early referral to multiple multiples clinic, um, which is a dedicated consultant and clinic um, and VTE assessment, low dose aspirin from 12 weeks, so that's 150 milligrams, PAPE measured, um, um, again, less than if it's less than 0.4 multiples of median, that's significant. Screening for uh, GDM with GTT at 16 to 18 weeks. Um, early discussions of things like preterm delivery, mode of delivery, place of delivery, um, role of steroids and magnesium sulfate. Screening for GDM with a GTT at 26 to 28 weeks if the 16 to 18 was negative. Um, regular blood pressure monitoring and urinalysis with VTE um, risk being reduced reassessed. Um, and women with um, additional risk factors like high BMI, multiple pregnancy, hypertensive disorders, placenta previous, um, being cared for in a high risk obstetric anaesthetist, uh, high risk clinic, an anaesthetic clinic at um, 30 to 32 weeks um, and timing of delivery with multiple pregnancy to be guided by the by how well the mum and baby both are doing. Um, there's no current evidence on uh, what is the optimum time for delivery. Um, so that's it really. That was that article. I hope this is short and concise for you and I hope you can just listen to this whilst you are um, getting on with other things in your life. Um, as I know, having um, done the part two recently, um, it can, reading a talk article on your own sat um, uh, it, it, on an evening can be quite tedious and you do lack uh, concentration and focus um, hopefully by by summarizing it for you and by going over what I thought were, were the salient points from this article um, I've just been able to help you a little bit um, to to get things started for you let me know how you like this uh, audio um, and if you enjoyed it and you th thought it was useful please uh, like uh, share and subscribe to my channel um, and I will continue to make more um, useful um, audios for you. Thank you.